<clears throat> Hiya fishy folks and welcome to Michael's Fish Room. Today's video, step by step, how to set up a guppy pond. Now, I know I've done videos about guppy pond tips and you know, there's a whole series about my guppy ponds this year and last year, but I still get questions step by step. What do you do? How do you do it? Why do you do it? So I figured I'd just make a video on it. So why don't you guys grab yourself a healthy snack and beverage and stand by. All right, fishy folks, let's go over what we need first. First, you need an actual pond. My favorite are the hard-sided, rubber-made commercial troughs. Um, stock tanks is what they're called. <coughs> Fine. Um, I like the 100 gallon uh, because they're, used, they're easy to move and they're usually pretty cheap. So I usually find them on Marketplace or Craigslist. 100 gallons, maybe $75. I usually try to work it down to 50. In fact, this one that I just got was $50 uh, from Marketplace. The guy listed it at like 9.30 on a Sunday, at like 9.30 on that same Sunday. I happened to search for some re strange reason. I messaged him and tell him uh, and said I'd pick it up. Would you take $50? I'll pick it up tomorrow. He's like, are you sure? I'm gonna mark it as sold, blah, blah, blah. So he marked it as pending. I went the next day, I picked it up. Turns out uh, he was an older guy who uh, uh, liked to take baths in it. So I've sanitized it. You may be asking to yourself, well, how did you do that? Well, I took a, a uh, bleach solution, 10 to one, 10 parts water, one part bleach, and I let it soak in there and then I rinsed it out really, really well. And then I let it air dry for about a week out here in the sun and um, that's that. Now, if there's any residual bleach, I will double or triple dose with Prime when I fill it up anyway, and that'll take care of that, and that should be fine. That's how I sanitize all my tanks, and I never have a problem, so. All right, so you need the pond. That's my favorite. I am going to tell you right now, stay away from inflatables. I have the massive inflatable pond that's right here, 200-ish gallons. Uh, it's three rings high, and the bottom ring has sprung a leak of air, and so not that good of an idea. Oh well, failure. Back to this pond. You want to find a nice level spot for it. Uh, you may or may not need a filter, and here's why. In my ponds, it's a 100-gallon pond, I may put four or five females and one or two male guppies in there, and a poop ton of plants that's that. It's not going to be overstocked. The f I won't even cycle it. The cycle will be actual natural and whatever ammonia is made by the fish and me overfeeding them is going to convert to nitrite and then convert to nitrate and it'll be very quick with the cycle because the bio load will be very small and the plants will absorb all the nitrates so there's no water changes needed. That's why we change water folks to remove nitrates. Yes, there are some excess elements we may, uh, we may remove, including hormones, but for the most part, the reason why we change water in fish tanks is to remove nitrate. So if there is no nitrate, there's no need to change water. Um, I will either put a sponge filter in there simply as a means of adding oxygen, um, not really filtration. If I do use a sponge filter, it'll probably be a small one. If not, it's just gonna be an air stone. Not really sure, I gotta see what I have in stock. So, you know, you're gonna need some sort of air pump. Um, that's not actually necessary. However, I like to use it, especially if you're in a hot climate. Um, hot water, the, the hotter the water, the less oxygen in the water. So I always like to add an air stone or some, some means of adding air to the water, especially if it gets hot. Um, all right, so we talked about the pond. We talked about, do you need a filter? If you do have uh, an air stone or something, you're gonna need a, a, an air pump. Um, next year, I think I may actually run an airline from my, my inside uh, system uh, or a second air pump, big air pump to run all my ponds. I got grand ideas for next year. So you need the pond, the fish, Lots of plants. I like floating plants. Uh, I buy all my pants, plants from KGE Aquatics. Check out KGE Aquatics on, uh, on Facebook. 
Um, but he's got great water lettuce and water hyacinth and all kinds of floating plants uh, that you can, you can add. Um, a pump, maybe if you're gonna do a filter, you don't need a filter, uh, especially if it doesn't get, you know, like Africa hot, like it's supposed to be 95 degrees today. It's, I don't know, it's 825. I was out here at 630, but the sun was in the wrong angle because it's hot. It's already like 86 or 85 degrees and those fat guys don't like the heat. It messes with our hair. The humidity messes with our hair too. All right, let's set it up. Refill your snack and beverage, stand by. All right, fishy folks, here's my 100 gallon um, Rubbermaid stock tank. There's what it looks like. You can see it says 100 gallon. And actually it's got this price, price sticker on it from when the guy originally bought it right here. I think that's uh, tractor supply, about 85 bucks. I paid 50 used. It's got two holes in it right there, which I'm not gonna fill it that high, so I'm not really gonna worry. Um, what it does have, which I kind of like, are these holes drilled in it. I was thinking of, of securing the, the, um, the netting right to that. So I got to see, you know, exactly how I build my, my top for this one. But a couple of, of major important things you got to do with these ponds. Not as important if it's a hard-sided one like this, but you want it level. So you can see it's level side to side. And then if we go over here. It's pretty much level. Actually, it's not as level as I thought it was. Uh, front to back. All I did was I put a little bit of dirt underneath this corner and that fixed both the, the levels. You could certainly level the ground. Um, I'm lazy and I'm not really supposed to be doing a ton of work yet. So uh, I'll trim these weeds back here eventually. But here's a re another reason why you want it level. Well, that, that dip over there is because the bottom ring is run out of air, but you can see on this side how the water, how high the water is. But if you go on this side, it's much higher because this side is much lower. Even though I tried to level it, I didn't really do a good job. Disaster. Don't do this anymore. All right, folks. What I'm going to do, I'm going to start filling this, uh, filling this pond with water and start making the lid. It's not really a lid. It's a it's a netting top, and that's to keep out dragonflies. Why do we want to keep out dragonflies, folks? Raise your hand. Okay, you in the handsome guy, bald, blue shirt, just had a heart attack. Well, we want to keep out dragonflies because dragon, adult dragonflies will drop their butts in the water and drop their eggs, and their nymphs are like little savages. They will eat all the guppy fry. Now, if you don't care about fry, if you just want ponds outside because you like the way the water sounds, or you just like how it looks, it doesn't matter. You can, you don't need a top, a, a lid, a, a, a net. But me, breeding for profit, I want all the babies because they're little dollar signs. So, I, uh, I want to keep the dragonflies out. So, that's why I have a net. All right, folks. I'm going to set that net up, and uh, I'll film that. Probably make it fast motion with some silly music, and uh, stand by. All right, fishy folks, here's my 100 gallon stock tank by Rubbermaid, hard sided. Um, I got this for $50 from Marketplace. The original price was 85. You can see the sticker is still on it. I think that's from Tractor Supply. Um, but I, they're just easy to maintain, easy to, uh, to uh, transport and uh, pretty safe. Here's why you don't want inflatable. The bottom ring, as I said, has a spring leak. I just filled it with air yesterday and it was perfect. And I came out last night to grill some steak and uh, not so good. So, all right, folks, uh, like I said, you want this to be level. And so this you can see is pretty much perfectly level this way. And then you got to check this way. And you can see pretty much perfectly level as well. Now, this has uh, the, that big hole right there. It's got one on either side. I'm not really sure what that was for. But um, I, I may actually fill that, fill that hole up because if water gets that high, that guppies could definitely get out from there. But All right, folks. Wow, look at this really cool bug. I don't know if you can see it. Look at it. It's like bright green. All right, sorry. Look, something shiny. I'm going to build my net. I'll film that for you guys, and uh, then we'll, we'll go from there. Get away. There was a mosquito, sorry. All 
Okay, folks, real quick. These are just banisters for, uh, not banisters. They're just, they're for deck, deck railings. I can't remember what they're called, but they're like 99 cents each at Home Depot. They're pressure treated, um, which means they'll last, you know, pretty much forever. So that's what I use as weights. You can use whatever you want. I just find it easier to, uh, to use and they seem to work well. But if you have scrap wood lying around, you can do that. The only thing you want to do, the reason for the weight is to keep the net tight so that it doesn't sag into the water and let the, uh, the dragonfly butts land in there. So, pro tip. We're done. I'm hot. Stand by. All right, fishy folks, we're done. Took what, five minutes, maybe? Um, so I, I, don't, I, I don't really think dragonflies are that smart. I don't think they're gonna be able to look and see there's a little space here. You know, I may add a little piece of wood or something if I do decide that's a problem, but you can see it's very taut. Um, and there's a little overhang on this side. And that's how you make the uh, that's how you make the, the, the netting top that I do. It's simple. A uh, couple wire ties, just wrap them around. The first version I made, I drilled holes and I made sure everything was perfect. That takes too much work and I'm too lazy and it's too hot, so. All right, now we gotta fill it. And uh, yeah, I'll do that. I'm not gonna film that because that's gonna be boring for you. So in the magic of YouTube, it's empty and then All right, fishy folks, water's in the pond. Uh, the net is made. I have air running to it, I'll go over that in a minute, but I also wanna talk about um, treating the water. Now, out here I don't have my auto water change system, so I use Seachem Safe. Put a link down below for that, but Seachem Safe is made for huge volumes of water. Like the minimum it says you could treat is 300 gallons with a quarter teaspoon. So a quarter teaspoon, if you don't have a specific measurement, is this is what it is. It's, it's a tad is what it's called. I bought these years ago. I'll put a link down below. It will be an affiliate link. I appreciate if you click on them, buy lots of things. I make millions. Um, but I bought these years ago when I was dosing my um, auto water change system every day. I, I would fill a vat up and then a timer would turn a pump on, which would fill the tanks and that that was before I, I added the filtration the uh, carbon block filter so this is a good way if you're if you're gonna buy safe if you have lots of little tanks and you want to use safe because it's not as stinky as prime and it does pretty much the same thing I know it doesn't remove heavy metals or something I know there's a little difference but for the most part it's the same thing removes chlorine chloramine and ammonia and detoxifies nitrite and nitrate this is what I use when I do fishing, cycling, um, or if you have a, a tank that has high nitrates or high ammonia and you can't you know, do enough water changes, dose this, you'll be fine. Anyway, link to that video somewhere over here. All right, folks, I have 100 gallons, but I'm gonna treat for 300 gallons, so I'm actually gonna triple dose, just in case there was any bleach left over. You can't overdose um, safe, or prime, as far as I know. Uh, so I'm just gonna just gonna measure out a a tad. Boom! Water dechlorinated. All right, folks, let's get the fish. What fish, you may ask? Well, I'm gonna go with the red snake skins. I have them on the website. Finally, uh, I've been breeding them for for months now, trying to get enough stock. I have I don't know five or six pairs. On, uh, you can buy them on my website, michaelsfishroom.com. Uh, but I, I really want to mass breed them out here because I think the sun and the bugs are going to make the, the colors pop. So I picked um, two really nice males, and I think 
four or five females. One of the females is a little small. I'm going to let her grow up out here and hopefully her fry will uh, will be born out here and then she'll she'll have the added benefit of the bugs and the nutrients out here uh, for future generations of fry. So let's go take a look at those fish. All right, fishy folks, here's the finished pond. We have our net, which keeps out the dragonflies. As you know, the dragonfly nymphs are savages and eat all the guppy fry. We have a couple water hyacinths in there and some guppy grass that hopefully will start to grow soon. There is no filtration in here. The only thing that's in here is a uh, no clog or a never clog air stone from Zis that I got from Aquarium Co-op. I think they're a buck ninety nine on the website. There'll be a link down below. Um, trying to find the fish so you can see them, but it's hard to see with the glare as you can see. Oh, there's some on the bottom. I don't know if you can see from the glare, but I put in uh, two males and five females. And, uh, you know, this is a brand new pond. I am certainly going to uh, keep an eye on it. What I probably will end up doing is adding a little bit of duckweed from the duckweed machine over here. And uh, that'll help with shade when it gets too hot. You can see here the... the um, Netting is very tight, which is good. That's how I want it. Uh, I can just adjust it if I wanted to by pulling it down like that and holding it like that, but it's fine. Uh, also, the ends, they're loose, which is fine. Um, I was thinking I was going to use those holes along the edge here, drill some more holes and use that to secure the net. But then I want to be able to get in the pond and take a look at the guppies and film with my underwater camera for you guys. So I've made my old school method of making the net. So that's it. That's the step-by-step -step directions or uh, steps I take to make a pond. Uh, as far as air, I just, from the air line over there, you can see the bubbling, uh, which it's not focusing on. There we go. So you can see the, the bubbling over there. That's, there's air coming into there from my uh, Tetra um, outside pond air pump. I'll put a link for that down below as well. I really like it. It's pretty powerful. It's powering two pumps over, or two air stones over here. Two, one filter, one air stone. Uh, a pretty long run. The, the pump is actually on the other side of the deck. Um, so it's a pretty long run of air. And then it's powering five or four ponds on the other side. So I like that Tetra air pump, but I just put a little T and a valve in and then, you know, the airline comes along here and then boom, with the Zis Never Clog Air Stone from Aquarium Co-op. So that does it, folks. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know if you have any questions. Take a look at my uh, all my pond videos and don't forget to check out Michael's Fish Room for guppies that you see breeding here. You, I, I've always find them used on Marketplace or eBay, not eBay, Marketplace or Craigslist. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna make that a blooper. Yes, there's some excess um, elements that we might, might remove, including, um, um, yeah, that's a brain fart. All right, fishy folks, I know you're asking to your, your uh, or to, uh, to transport, like I said, I don't know. It removes chlorine, chloramine, and ammonia, and it detoxifies nitrate and nitrate, nitrite and nitrate. I'm going to do that again. Anyway, so we got the spoons. This is 100 gallons. I'm going to dose for uh, um, about 150 gallons, which is a dash. I'm actually going to gonna um, do two dashes, which is really a tad, so I'm just gonna do one tad, that's dumb. I'm just gonna start again. <laughs>